you all. It's great to be here. Um, as mentioned, it's my honor to serve as the 50th Lieutenant Governor of our great state and could not be more excited um, for this event and to get to join you all. Anytime you see K-State and Colorado State standing up on the stage together, it's always a, a good start. So that's fantastic. And um, I understand there are people here from eight different states um, total, which is pretty incredible. I would ask, if you are not from Kansas, would you raise your hand? Just from Scott, Kansas. It's incredible. You put your hand down. Thank you for making the effort to come here. That and then if you are from Garden City, would you raise your hand? Yeah, a lot of people from Garden City from right here. So it's great to get to be in your community. Thank you um, as a community for hosting this time. Um, I bring greetings from Governor Jeff Collier. He um, regrets he was not able to be here today, but he does send you his greeting. Certainly water and the Ogallala is something that we talk about a lot in Topeka, a lot in our office, and could not be more um, delighted. On the um, right down here, we were talking to our office, and Daniel asked me on my comments, he said, don't water it down. <laughs> Given this crowd, it's probably uh, But also, don't be too dry. It's not that was probably a good advice as well. So, this is a perfect location um, for the Ogallala Aquifer Conference. As we all know, we are right over the middle of the Ogallala Aquifer right here. And this is the place where water, especially groundwater, here in Garden City, here in Southwest Kansas, is extremely critical for the community. Garden City, uh, if you're not from here, uh, you should know that the city of Garden City has been committed to being innovative with their use of municipal water. For example, the DFA, Air Force of America, have a new facility where they partnered with the city of Garden City um, in a significant water reuse program with that facility. Additionally, agriculture is the most important industry in southwest Kansas and certainly in the county, which is Finney County, where we serve today. And water is critical, and we all know this, to the overall region. The Ogallala Aquifer is the main source of water for all uses in western Kansas, really the western third of our state, especially crucial to agriculture. Agriculture is the largest industry in our state, making up about 44.5% of the economy in Kansas. So a little under half of our state's economy is tied to agriculture. So when people ask me, how is the economy in Kansas doing? Really, the a big question is, how is agriculture doing? The overall aquifer is a big part of that. Kansas has approximately 3.5 million irrigated acres. 1.4 million of those are irrigated through the overall I have a lot of personal experience, and this I was excited to come here today because um, it's near and dear to my heart. So I grew up in Quinter, Kansas, which if you're not from here, Quinter is about two hours north of here. Our family um, farms and feeds cattle there. My dad and brother um, have our farming operation that they run today. But then my mother is from southwest Kansas, south of Johnson, which is about one hour southwest of here. So I look at our... Um, our operation, and I look at growing up there in Quinter, mostly dry land, we had some irrigation. I remember um, as a small boy, um, and growing up through grade school, middle school, high school, we had flood irrigation. There's probably you know, a lot of you just the first thing we look to. Um, better than nothing, I look back at how inefficient it was. I remember um, scattering out pipe, you know, at the start of the watering season, and every day, you know, in the morning you have to open up the gates a certain width, then you come back 12 hours later, and you hope that you guessed correctly. Um, if you guessed wrong, of course, water had not made it into the row. If you had um, guessed too high, you have a lot of waste of water in the tail of it. And it was just an incredibly um, inefficient system. Not to boot the fact that um, <coughs> August, when the corn's about ready to be harvested, we had to go pick up all that pipe. Um, I was the youngest brother, and so if you ever pick up irrigation pipe, you'll know that there's often water that's stale, that's been sitting there for a long time, that's in that pipe. And the shortest person is always the one that gets wet. Um, and so I would be the short guy, and so I would get wet. I tell about my sophomore year in high school, where I finally got through my five, five foot, eight year old grandfather. And so he was the guy that I would hold the pipe up in the water all the time. But I also remember uh, picking up that irrigation pipe many times um, around Labor Day, which two day football season had always started. And we'd have full practice in the morning. A lot of our other teammates would go and they ran all afternoon, but we'd go pick up irrigation pipe during the day and then we'd go practice football at night. So there wasn't a lot of rest in our household. But, you know, when I went to college, when we put in our first center pivot um, and then it expanded from there. 
And I even look at that first center pivot and how inefficient it was compared to a few years later when we added drops and nozzles. Um, so much more efficient today than we were. Of course, that was all market driven. Looking back, I think part of that was the fact that my dad also lost his free labor when I went to college. And, uh, so that's part of it as well. But we, um, you know, the overall like this near and dear to my heart, and extremely important that we're here today. Um, additionally, I would like to say that the state of Kansas has acknowledged the importance of water. In 2013, then Governor Brownback issued an executive order for a 50 year vision for the future supply of Kansas. Leadership to this water vision um, occurred by many people in this room, notably um, Tracy Streeter. I think Tracy is here. Um, I saw you earlier, Tracy Streeter, Secretary of Agriculture McClaskey. I know you're going to hear from both of them later. You know, they were instrumental in providing leadership to that effort and really addressing the disappearing aquifer and was a call of action. One of the things that came out of that was the notion of having this summit where we get together people that are impacted in all eight states to share ideas. It's very important that we hear from producers so far as what they are doing on the ground to help conserve water and what their experience is with the Oklahoma. This Oklahoma summit plays an important role in the future of this very important national resource. It fulfills one of the action items of the Kansas, Kansas Water League. And it's encouraging to see so many of you here. So thank you for being here. I'm excited for the next 24 hours. And lastly, I would just say, um, as Lieutenant Governor and as someone who's from a family that has a farming operation, you know, I try to look at all issues through the lens of four people. And those four people are Quincy, who's my six-year-old, Austin, who's my four-year-old, Whitney, who's my two-year-old, and Elise, who is five months. And as I look around this room, you know, Many of us will be impacted by the Ogallala, but in many ways, many of us are here because we need to take and do things today. But we all know that our children and our grandchildren are going to be impacted by the decisions <coughs> that are made that impact the Ogallala, which is all the more reason I'm excited to be here. So thank you all very much. I'll be around here um, for a little while this afternoon, so um, feel free to track me down with any questions. But glad that you're here and we'll be able to take that some. Thank you.